Chapter 1 The chapter begins on a beach where a young boy named Seth is playing with a young girl. They build a sandcastle as they play and have fun. A huge boy emerges, sees them playing with the sand, and destroys the sandcastle as he says they are playing like sissies. The girl begins to cry as the bully tells them to go and play their game elsewhere. Seth gets up in anger and tells the boy to get off the sandcastle. The boy laughs at him as he repeats himself, and Seth suddenly kicks his face. The bully falls to the ground in shock as Seth stares at him with anger. He realizes that his nose is bleeding and gets angry. The boy begins to cry and Seth and the girls are surprised. He screams for help, and the bully's elder brother arrives. He asks Seth if he is the one who injured his brother, but Seth doesn't respond. The large boy tries to attack Seth as he repeats the question, but he dodges the punches. Seth talks to himself and says he never learned any martial arts skills, but is naturally a good fighter. He continues dodging the punches as the large boy gets frustrated. Seth kicks the bully's groin and he falls to the ground. He and his brother begin crying as they scream, and Seth looks away. He says he was never a troublemaker and people took the fight as a simple fight between children. The real problem began when Seth became older and entered Moon Elementary School. Seth enters fifth grade and as he walks to school one day, some middle schoolers standing in an alley call him. The boy tells Seth to relax and says he was once a student at the elementary school. Seth enters the alley and sees other students. Austin asks Seth to do a favor for him as he enters the alley and says it won't take long. The students commend Austin and say he should get into the business of kidnapping because he knows how to convince kids to follow him. Austin asks Seth if he will help them, as he tells his friends to shut up. Seth asks him what he wants, and Austin says he should give them all the money he has. Seth insults them and says that middle schoolers are too poor and have to take money from little kids. He also calls them trash, and Austin and the others are shocked. The other students begin to laugh and say that Austin got roasted by a little kid. They see that he is angry and Austin tries to attack Seth. Seth dodges and attacks as Austin says he has a death wish. He puts more effort into his punches, but Seth dodges all the attacks with ease. The students wonder why he has a hard time fighting Seth, and some girls begin rooting for Seth. Their leader walks to them as the students say that people might start gathering because of the fight. Seth suddenly attacks him by using his knee to hit his jaw and knocks him down. Seth using his knee to knock down the middle schooler. He pants as he fights, and the leader of the gang hits him and knocks him to the ground. He yells at Seth and asks him if he wants to die. Seth tells himself he was never afraid of fighting, and he never thought about what would happen next in a fight. He sees some bricks on the floor and picks one up. Seth says he knows exactly how to defeat the person he is fighting and screams as he lunges at the leader. He hits the leader's head with a brick and he falls to the ground unconscious. The other students panic as they see what is happening and realize that he is bleeding. The students tell their leader to get up because he is their boss, but he remains unconscious. They get angry and rush at Seth, and Seth retaliates as he says he thinks he was born with the ability to fight well. He rushes at the students as he says he never loses a fight. The girls who are with the middle schoolers sit on the ground in fear as they see that Seth has defeated and knocked down all the students who attacked him. He clenches the brick that's covered in blood as he pants. At the police station, an officer asks Seth if he really attacked and defeated the middle schoolers by himself and asks Seth to be honest. Seth doesn't give the officer a reply, and his mom rushes into the building. She apologizes to the officer, but he tells her that she doesn't have to worry about anything. She takes Seth out of the building and asks him if he's hurt. He says he isn't hurt, and his mom asks him to make a promise to her. She begs him not to fight anyone again, and Seth has no choice but to agree. He says he never wanted to see the sadness in her eyes again, and she thanks him for agreeing. He says he didn't know the truth behind the sadness on her face. Time passed and Seth went to middle school. A bully barges into the class and yells his name. He rushes to Seth and asks him if he thinks he is funny as he pushes him to the ground. The bully insults him and says Seth should do whatever he tells him to do. He asks Seth for his money and says he should borrow from someone else, if he doesn't have enough. Seth gets angry as he clenches his teeth but doesn't retaliate. He apologizes to the bully, who slams his head to the ground and calls him a dumbass. 
He tells Seth to watch himself around him, and leaves as he says he can make Seth's life hell. Other students stand and watch as the bully leaves, and they smile. Seth sits up and commends himself for not retaliating and breaking his promise. Seth returns home and meets his mom. She welcomes him and asks him how school is. Seth lies and tells her that school is great. She tells him that the restaurant is doing great, and they talk. Seth tells himself that all he wants is to see his mom smile no matter what happens. Several cars park in front of their cafe as they talk. A man emerges with a photo of Seth's dad and apologizes to his mom. He says that Seth's dad passed away, and his mom begins to cry. Seth tries to comfort her as he asks what is wrong, and he sees the photo of his father. It's in Yongjin High, where several students murmur about a new student who has been accepted into their school. Some students lose interest in the conversation as they realize the new student is a boy and not a girl. The teacher asks the students to settle down because they are noisy, and she can't hear herself think. She announces that there is a new transfer student and asks the students to help him out because they accepted him in the middle of the year. The students agree and she is relieved because they reply quickly. The teacher introduces Seth as he enters the class. Several students begin talking about how handsome Seth is. The class rep sees Seth and recognizes him. The students continue making noise and the teacher is forced to yell at them. Some students who are sitting at the back of the class are talking and one of them sees Seth. He recognizes Seth as the kid he bullied in middle school and says it's a coincidence. Seth introduces himself to the class and the teacher says he can sit on the empty seat at the back of the class. Seth goes to the seat and sees a boy named Victor sleeping beside him. He sits down and sees the bullies and his friends. Seth smiles and waves at them as he sees them and remembers they are the bullies from middle school. The bully goes to Seth and sits in front of him. He says he and his friends were sad when he transferred from their middle school and says they missed him. The bully's friend stands behind Seth and says they should have another great school year. Seth has a smile on his face as he talks to bullies and the bullies get angry. He asks Seth what's so funny and asks if he remembers their past experiences. Seth says he remembers and can't forget them and he smiles at them to their surprise. The bullies get angry and try to attack him, but Victor tells them to shut up. He looks at the bullies in anger and instructs them to be quiet when he is trying to sleep. The bullies apologize and insult Seth as they say their conversation isn't over. The bullies walk away in anger and an old man enters the class. He trembles as he stands in front of the students and begins to teach them. The bullies get angry as they stare at Seth and curse him. He clenches his fists and says he's going to kill Seth. Meanwhile, Seth stares out the window and realizes the weather is nice. The class rep stares at Seth and realizes he's the boy she played with on the beach when she was young. Seth notices that she is staring at him and wonders why she's doing so, and she hurriedly looks away. He wonders if she knows him, but continues staring out the window. He says he hopes that school is fun and leans back in his seat. He then makes a funny face as he realizes he is sleepy. Victor waking up and seeing Seth beside him. He wonders who Seth is, but ignores him and stands up. Victor yawns as he stands and the bullies wonder if he is leaving the class. They realize that Victor is leaving and reignite their anger as they see Seth. Their leader calls them stupid as they walk to him and say he's going to beat Seth. The class rep stands in front of the bullies and they tell her to get out of their way. She refuses and says she doesn't want them to cause trouble in the class. The bullies threaten to beat her, but she refuses to let them pass. She yells at them as they say she should get out of their way. She reminds them she is the class rep, but she gets interrupted as she talks. Seth interrupts the class rep as she talks to the bullies and thanks her for standing up for him. He asks her to move and says the bullies are his buddies from middle school. He asks the bullies if they missed him and says he missed them after he changed schools. Seth says he held back from fighting and beating the bullies when he was young because of a promise to his mom. The bullies notice that he isn't the same as the last time they saw him. They all stare at him as they are surprised and Seth says his dad made him change. He loosens his tie as he says his dad instructed him not to get his ass kicked. Later, Victor walks into the class as he pants and sweats. He realizes that the bullies aren't in the class and sees that Seth is still asleep. Victor sits down, places his head on the desk, and falls asleep. 
The class rep looks back as she is nervous. Meanwhile, the lead bully goes to his boss and tells him what happened. His boss, who calls himself the Goblin of Jungsan Middle School, asks the bully how he lost a fight against the transfer student. He realizes that Seth was bullied by him in middle school and insults him as he asks for help. The bully says that Seth was weak when they were in middle school and says something about him changed. He recalls how he and his friends got punched and beaten by Seth. Goblin says the bully, who he calls Nathan, should be ashamed of himself for losing against Seth. Goblin walks to Seth's class as Nathan accompanies him. He uses a lot of force to open the door, leading it to make a bang. He asks who the new kid is, and asks a student who is standing if he is the one. The student frightfully says he isn't the new student, and the entire class is in shock. Goblin asks for Seth, and Nathan tells him he is the kid sleeping beside Victor. He walks to Seth and says he will give him a proper welcome. The class wonders why Goblin is there, and he gets to Seth's seat. He tells Seth he wants to talk, but Seth ignores him. Goblin forces Seth to wake up and asks him why he beat up Nathan, who is his source of money. He introduces himself to Seth as the Goblin of Jungsan Middle School, and Seth complains because he is too close. Goblin says that Seth looks familiar and asks if they have met before. Seth wonders what he is talking about, and Goblin immediately remembers. He remembers that Seth is the kid who kicked him in the face when he was on the beach. He also recalls how Seth kicked his brother's groin and had a smile on his face. Seth remembers who Goblin is and makes an excited face. Goblin panics as he stares at Seth, and Seth asks him how he and his elder brother are doing. He tells Seth he will see him later, and he leaves the class. Nathan yells and asks Goblin why he didn't beat Seth up. Goblin asks Nathan to move, but he continues complaining and asking why he didn't keep his promise of beating Seth. He stares at Nathan with anger and asks him to move. Goblin walks away, and Nathan wonders what is going on as he stares at the class. Seth relaxes in his seat and says it's good to return to his neighborhood and see familiar faces. He suddenly notices something, and the class rep appears to notice it too. Outside, Goblin calls his elder brother and asks where he is. The End Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. Please let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below, and while you're at it, check out these videos for more. We'll see you soon.